Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dr. Sloan Charles, because today's the 4th of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. This is always a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then before we uh, jump in into the charts, as always, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, you're free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Uh, now then, jumping into this figure here uh, so let's see what's happening here globally so as you can see uh, the number continues to rise we've managed to or, well, overcome the six and a half million uh, total infections um, so yep uh, and let's have a look at the daily cases so yeah they have surged yesterday uh, quite a lot and uh, in a way it, it seems that it hit the record high here so uh, yeah unfortunately um, however if we apply the same logic as we did previously where after a, each surge there is a uh, 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 then a steep decline um, so yep uh, in a way maybe we, tomorrow we could see the number kind of slowing down a little bit but of course let's see what happens uh, for now it's just a, an idea uh, but yeah let's see if this idea kind of works out um, now then Jumping into a few charts, now the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX and look at the performance that we had here from the German index yesterday. Um, so as you can see, it not only it overcame, uh, it not, well, not only did it close in the positive territory, territory, let's put it this way, it also overcame uh, one of our levels here, one of my levels, the, mm, the 12,273 zone and uh, yep, it continues to push further north. Uh, the, the other targets uh, here on the chart, uh, what I was mentioning was were the uh, 12,887 and the 12,974 zones. Uh, these are marked by the low of the 10th of December and the uh, 31st of January respectively. So in a way for now guys uh, it seems that yes uh, it may continue pushing further north um, especially if it can if it still balances above this 12,273 mark which is the highest point of March and like I said initially uh, I was targeting this level but as you can see it comfortably overcame this one yeah it reached the level but it comfortably overcame that as well so and uh, looking at the cash index right now we can see that the price is currently balancing at around 12,480 mark so basically just fractionally below where it closed yesterday however uh, not something very drastic um, still quite positive and uh, yep let's see um, let's see if this can uh, continue pushing further north as I said uh, our main target for now will be the uh, the 12,887 level that's the uh, the lowest point of December 2019 so yep keep your eyes on that one but of course let's not exclude a possibility for seeing a bit of a correction here to the downside however from the very short term perspective in a way if it stays above this upside line here taken from the low of the 14th of May then um, in a way uh, still kind of uh, the bulls could come in somewhere here near this upside line and drive this one higher so even if we see a correction lower uh, if, if we see a move lower this still could be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying so that's why guys for now uh, yes we did have a decent up move here already uh, maybe a small setback could be possible if so then keep your eyes on the highest point of March near the 12,273 but if it provides 
provides decent support, then another round of buying could be possible. Uh, if not, if this gets broken, then as I said, uh, this uh, keep an eye on this upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May. And uh, yep, that could be the kind of the last resort for the uh, for the bulls uh, to step in, uh, where to step in, and uh, in a way. But if this upside line gets broken, then and uh, the the price starts falling below the 11,770 zone here. I've talked about this area previously. Um, this would also place the price below back below the 200-day EMA, and maybe the bears more bears could see this as a good opportunity to step in. So that's why for now, be very careful, guys. Um, the FTSE 100. So. Um, this one continues to push higher. Of course, uh, the fact that the, uh, the 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 pound is on the weaker side right now that's helping the uh, the, the FTSE to drift further north. And of course, the positivity positivity in the equity markets uh, that's also kind of spilling in into this uh, into this index. Um, but from the technical side, as I've mentioned before, uh, as you can see, uh, we managed to overcome this 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci, this level here near the 6,295 zone, and also pushed above the uh, 100 EMA here on the daily chart. So, and we managed to not not only that, we managed to close above this. So, in a way, um, everything's kind of still leaning more towards the upside. Um, however, looking at the cash index right now, we are seeing that the price is currently balancing at around. 6,374 mark. So just slightly, slightly below where it closed yesterday. So in a way, um, this could continue pushing further north and we will be targeting higher, slightly higher levels. As I mentioned before, the 6,460 zone, that's uh, one of the levels that we're going to be aiming for. Slightly above that, we do have the 6,536. And uh, yep, above that, we do have that 200, e uh, 200 day EMA, which coincides with the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci. So uh, also a potential good area for resistance. But of course, uh, let's see first if it can reach the 6,460 level. Um, UK oil, which is the Brent oil, and uh, yep, yesterday as you can see, this level here, the the high of the 11th of March, held uh, the price from moving higher, and um, and today uh, we are seeing a bit of a uh, a bit of bearishness here. Um, some might say even we we have formed a possible reversal uh, signal here on the daily chart, uh, which is a doji and. Um, Yep. Now, um, now the 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 commodity has a potential uh, to drift back down here. But again, this move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. So in a way, if we if we see the uh, the commodity drifting lower towards the 36.10 zone, and if it finds good support here, because previously this area acted as a very good a resistance level, but if this time it uh, it provides decent support, the bulls could step in here and drive this one higher and in the same area here uh, the the commodity would could also meet its to uh, 21 day EMA um, or we could see a, maybe a similar scenario as we had here before around for example the mid mid May and the uh, the end of May where um, the where Brent oil came down closer to the 21 day EMA but kind of reversed uh, from this area slightly above this uh, 21 day EMA and yet yeah, pushed higher so that's why uh, for now even if we see like I said a drop lower this area could be uh, maybe a perfect one for the bulls to step in again. However, if the the, the the price starts falling back below this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of January and falls below the 32.21 zone, then yes, uh, further declines could be possible. Um, Ethereum. Now Ethereum um, is a bit of a on a roller coaster ride right now. Um, after a surge that we saw here in the beginning of this week, um, where the um, the crypto managed to reach this uh, the highest point of March near the 252.50 level, it uh, then reversed sharply back down, drifted lower, and uh, well, in a way, it, at one point it dropped below this 227.50 zone, which is marked by the highest point of April. However, it didn't stay there for too long and, and got pushed back above it. So now it's kind of trading above this level, however, still below this uh, 252.50 zone. Now, in a way for us to get excited about higher levels, we would need to see a nice good break above this area. Uh, let me just 
drag the highlighted area here we would need to see a nice good push above this uh, above this barrier in order to um, aim for higher levels because until we see that uh, we're gonna remain a little bit skeptical about higher about the upside uh, but if we do get that break then yes this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and the next target for us could be around the 278.2630 zone roughly around there marked by the high of the 24th of February. In terms of the downside, now here it's a bit of a tricky one because we do have a bunch of upside lines which are still kind of in play I would say so um, in a way one of these we could dra draw here uh, more uh, taken from the low the 13th of March and in a way if we get a break of that uh, upside line then yes we could start considering lower areas until then. Uh, it seems that the downside could be slightly off the table however we need that confirmation break here above this 252.50 level in order to aim for higher levels and ideally a daily close could do the trick here. Um, AUD USD. So uh, this one, uh, this morning we had some data from Australia, and uh, basically the the retail sales came out slightly better uh, than the forecast. Uh, the forecast was at minus seventeen point nine percent. That the the actual figure uh, came out at minus seventeen point seven. So just a slight improvement. However, uh, let's not forget that still this is a very very bad number overall because let's say let's say even comparing to the previous uh, month's number which was in uh, which was at plus 8.5 percent this one like i said is at minus 17.7 percent so overall it's still not good uh so we can see that yes the the pandemic is kind of affecting the uh, all the retail sales in uh, across the globe and uh, yep here for example you can see that the yesterday the pair drifted higher it got a hold up near this 0 0.6934 zone which is marked by the high of the 16th of January uh, and today we did have another test of this area uh, yesterday we had an overshoot but we didn't close the daily candle above it and this morning we are seeing another test of this area and now the mm, the uh, the pair, the pair here is. Uh, it seems that it's kind of. Uh trying to probably uh, move back down maybe but even so if it moves lower here uh, still the uh, the upside scenario will be the main one as long as the uh, the pair remains above this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March so something like this could be possible where we could see a drift lower a correction lower um, and then if this upside line uh, continues to provide support then yes another round of buying could be possible uh, where we could then aim for the uh, the highest point of January uh, or in other words the, the current highest point of this year near the 0 0.7032 uh, zone and well yep we'll take it from there after in terms of the, the in terms of the downside we need to see a break of this upside line and a drop below this 0 0.6677 level at a men that I've mentioned yesterday so keep your eyes on that one uh, US dollar against the Swiss francs so uh, something to monitor right now because uh, this morning because we do have the uh, Swiss inflation figures coming out in year on year and month on month basis for the month of May. Um, the expectations right now are for a, uh, well, the year on year is expected to have declined to minus 1.3%. However, the month on month figure is believed to have risen slightly from minus 0 0.4 to plus 0 0.1 so just a slight kind of move above zero and uh, yep let's see how all this is going to play play out the um, to be honest for now um, looking at this picture looking at US dollar against the Swiss franc we are seeing that the pair is stuck within the range here within this wide range roughly between the 0 0.9580 and the 0 0.9797 levels um, we need to see a nice good break through the lower side of the range first before we could consider, uh, let's say, larger extensions to the downside. Uh, however, for now, um, yes, from the very short term perspective, it is on a bit of a decline. However, we cannot really do anything until we see that daily close uh, below the one, uh, 0 0.9580 zone. So let's keep an eye on this one. And in terms of the upside, uh, we would need to see a push above the 0 0.9681 zone, roughly around here before we could maybe examine a possibility of this pair moving towards the upper bound of the range near the 0 0.9797. A uh, quick update on EURCHF, not much to 
talk about here uh, because I've talked about this one yesterday and uh, basically what the, the main thing is that this level here acted as a very good area of um, of, of resistance near the 1.0812 uh, zone we did have a small overshoot however um, it still remained uh, below this the rate still re remains below this barrier uh, this level by the way is the mm, let me just quickly adjust this there there we go and so this level is the lowest point of september 2019 so yep as you can see it now acts as a good area of resistance so previously it acted as a support level now it's taking the role of resistance so even if we see a bit of a decline here uh still don't get me wrong as long as the uh the pair remains above either the 200 day ema or the uh this upside support line we will stay positive and we'll aim for higher levels like the 1.0863 or even above that but again for now guys be very careful uh, we will examine the downside scenario if we get a strong move back below this 1.0710 zone or back below this downside resistance line taken from the high highest point of april 2019 so yep keep your eyes on that one uh gbp jpy i haven't looked at this one for quite a while and let me just refresh the chart here uh remove everything and let's uh do it everything from scratch so um, basically as you can see the after the mm, the pair drifted lower and found support somewhere around here near the 129.30 zone um, it it then reversed back to the upside and this way kind of creating a, a higher low and uh, yep it also overcame this barrier right here the uh, the high of the mm, this is the highest point of April let me just double check yes that's the highest point of April it overcame the highest point of April near the 135.75 and drifted further north now it's currently kind of balancing near the 200 day ema but in a way as long as it stays above this above this highest point of april near the 135.75 zone yes it still has a good chance to drift further north uh one of the levels that we're going to be targeting will be somewhere around here near the 138.88 zone marked by the uh by the low of the 24th of october 2019 of course and uh, yep then after that we'll take it from there but for now yes it seems that it wants to drift further north however don't get me wrong uh, it's a battle of the two kind of weaker currencies here right now so uh so let's see which one will outpull which but if suddenly the uh, market sentiment uh, changes to a more of a risk off one then uh, we could see some yen buying and uh, the, yep, the pair could drift lower maybe even back below this 135.75 zone so uh for but for now like i said the uh, the positivity in the market in the equity market is uh is is there and uh yep it could continue uh, being uh, being there as well so uh, that's why this pair could in a way drift a little bit higher here so yep let's keep an eye on this one and uh finally euro usd so this pair act uh, well hit our target here perfectly near the mm, uh, 16 where initially i was targeting this 12 uh, 1.1237 zone uh marked by the high of the 16th of april uh, sorry 16th of march and uh as you can see the uh the pair drifted higher yesterday this is what i was talking about yesterday where i was saying that in a way if this barrier can, uh, provides resistance which is you can see it continues to do so we may see a small setback here maybe back towards this 1.1147 zone um so yep uh, be very careful here and also be very careful today we do have the uh, ecb interest rate decision um, followed by a press conference later on so yep uh, something to be very cautious about uh, however of course the interest rate will stay the same but let's see if there will be any changes to um, to any stimulus packages uh, from the ecb so um, so yep let's we'll monitor that carefully however like i said be very uh, be cautious here today uh, yeah Yes, uh, the main scenario for now at the moment is this that we could see a bit of a correction here to the downside um, towards the 1.1147 and if it provides decent support a nice uh, round of buying could be seen here again and maybe we could this time overcome this uh, 1.1237 zone and then yep target higher levels but again like I said be very careful today and uh, yep keep your eyes on the price action so guys I hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening if you want to catch my video later 
later on my traders uh, tea time uh, at around 13 15 GMT we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and uh, yeah we'll take it from there but I really appreciate your your time guys thank you very much and I'll see you later thank you very much and bye bye